Hey y'all, uh, once again, uh, it, of course it's Matt Rogers. Uh, here today we have Etan Shander from the Philly Voice, my buddy, my favorite contrarian. If you follow him on social media, yeah, you just, you, you gotta take him seriously, but you can't, he will literally just say the most ridiculous thing and just to try to get the buzz because a lot of times on Twitter, facts don't matter. So right. that's all. <laughs> Only on Twitter. <laughs> I can't do that in real life. Oh my God, no. no What's up, bro? Uh, so tell the people about yourself, E. Ted, other than being a, the, the world's greatest uh, Twitter contrarian. No, no, far from it, far from it. Man, it's it's a pleasure, Matt, to be back on. And you can just, Philly Voice, as you mentioned, that's easy once, twice a week, depending on what's going on. Props and Locks, Fox 29, good day as well. You can see me there. And Odd Shoppers, the stuff behind me, that's now a lot of what I'm doing with a lot of betting content. So those three places are pretty much the easiest. We're starting this new betting account there, Stacks Teddy. So, well, you know, I'm not going to give you 15 things, laundry list of stuff. So just Philly Voice, Fox 29, that's usually the easiest. Yes, absolutely. So jump right into it. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about uh, J James Harden's comments about, you know, he's willing to take what's left? How did that first strike you? And what do you think that that signals for where the, the, tra the trajectory of the franchise is headed? So I think the optics of what happened versus the reality are going to be a little different in the sense of the optics of it are, hey, I'll do whatever I, it needs to happen trust in Daryl Morey and the team saying, well, now we've got some extra cash to be flexible and we're going to do whatever is possible versus the reality, which I don't think is totally far removed from that, but just a little different, Matt, in that really where was James Harden going to go in the open market to a competitor? Not to say anybody, because you can find somebody who's going to throw cash out there in a bad situation, but where was James Harden going to get that money on an equal level in the open market from a team that was willing to put that out there and still have a shot at making it as a top four on either conference or making it, you know, into the playoffs, deep into the playoffs. And the reality is, is that there wasn't going to be that. So no. yes, he took a pay cut, but at the same time, right. It's also what else, those were the circumstances that kind of mandated. And then I'll just do you one better right here on that, which is, you don't want to be the guy in Philadelphia who comes into a season with the label selfish or whatever else attached to you. Even though James Harden was in his right as an NBA basketball player in every single shed of light that was positive, that he could have had all of that money. But you know, right? People would come out, oh, he's selfish. He took the money. So Harden really had no choice but yeah. to do what he did. And I think Daryl Morey had no choice but to kind of allocate those funds. They got PJ, they got Daniel House, you know, they trade for DeAnthony Melton. Okay. You know, they're essentially running it back with a little bit of a deeper squad. And I, it seems like this team is just built for James Harden over the next two years, not really built for Embiid. Absolutely. I totally. So, your last point, I agree with pretty much everything you said there. Uh, kind of in the sim similar way, th th this team has never really been built for Joel Embiid. It was built. That's right. And hard, uh, Ben Harden. Ben, ben Simmons, you're ben, right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's we had Ben Harden in the playoffs. We'll <laughs> <laughs> At least James did shoot the ball, though. Correct. James showed up. You're right. <laughs> uh, but, but I think but, you're right. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say you're right about where you were going. Where, and and this is, I think, kind of the fascinating point to it, where you you now have a chunk of years to look with Joel Embiid healthy as a member of the Philadelphia 76ers, not will he play? Is he injured? All the stuff that initially happened, right? You actually have a resume. You have somewhat of a tenure here and you can argue that every single year, the team was built more. So except for one small stretch and you know, when that was right. The Jimmy. last year. No, it was Jimmy. I would, I would argue oh. when Jimmy was here, you saw the only real attempt to match okay. a star with Embiid. And it was to the point where, and again, you know, whatever's out there is out there, but it was to the point where either Jimmy couldn't take it or the people here couldn't take it, what have you. But it was the only time that I ever felt like, okay, Embiid had somebody like next to, I think Tyrese Maxey can be that guy, but we'll see how things progress. 
Wow. And so I like Maxi a lot, but it sounds like when I talk to people, because obviously for the listeners, I don't live in uh, the Philadelphia area anymore. I grew up there, haven't lived there in a while. But whenever I talk to, uh, I live in the DMV, Delaware, uh, Del- uh, DC, Maryland, Virginia area. But whenever I talk to people back in Philadelphia, the, the feeling in the city, and maybe folks get to see how lightning quick he is, because on TV, he's amazing. People are really high on Tyrese Maxey. Do you think that he'll be like, I've heard folks saying that they kind of not expect, but wouldn't be shocked to see him as an all-star. I think that's a bit high for me, but what are your thoughts on that? So I'm going to answer the question with somewhat of a question, but I'll talk through it. So it's not just returning the volley (laughs) of a question with you, Matt, because I think it's a, a really good point to build on here with the future, but if you remove the typical association or tag with an all-star in any sport, I don't care if it's baseball, basketball, what have you, but all-stars a lot of times just get in because of the name, right? It's yeah. oh, well, this guy is here. We see it all the time. Right. So if we were to create somewhat of an even playing field and said that the weight of the name James Harden no longer applies, and you're just looking at player a and player B, I'd argue that Tyrese Maxey is going to have a better shot to make the all-star team this year than James Harden. And you know what? To be fair, it's more Maxey taking advantage of the spacing that Harden creates. Wow. You see, I think what's happened here is it's not an either or. It's nobody outside of, and Embiid is Embiid, so you just put him aside here. But nobody really, more so than Tyrese Maxey, has benefited and taken advantage of the spacing more with James Harden arrival. So I think Harden, as much as we talk about the team built around Harden, Harden's presence here, Matt, I think is really going to help Tyrese Maxey on the floor this year and probably boost him to like quasi all-star status. I like it. it, it and I, if, if, if that's what you're saying and, and that's the, if that's what happens, we're in business. We should be going to the conference finals because I've said, I know you do a lot of wagers and you're pretty good on it. We try. (laughs) So I would say, I expect, I would set on assists per game. I'm expecting Harden to do about 12. And I know that's high, but I think that that's more his role now. He's about a 17, 18 point, 12, 13. You watch, you'll see a lot of 14 and 14 from Harden this year. And to your point, if Maxi can hit those jumpers or, they have a real they seem to be really well in sync on the fast break and being able to you know there's been a lot of full court passes with to maxi who's just lightning quick if he's stepping up to quasi level save for Embiid's health i think we should be in business yeah that's the big thing man i mean i think there is and and this is what i'm going to be writing on next week just leading up to camp and everything but we talk about this jump that needs to happen for Jalen hurts. It's obvious it's out there. It's Hey, if Jalen makes this step and takes that next level to his game and it's transferred out there on the field, then, Oh my goodness, this team should win the division. We should be talking about them getting back into the playoffs and making a run now with what they had as far as experience, but it's all predicated on Jalen taking that next step. I'd argue including Carter Hart, because I think he's already made a step. And now that the Flyers are pretty much at the mercy of what they can do around him. But I'd argue that including Carter Hart, I mean, if there's somebody, I don't know who it would really be right now on the Phillies, but there isn't anybody except Jalen Hurts and Tyrese Maxey that truly need to take the next step. Castellanos. Yeah, okay. okay. I, I guess you're right. I mean, I, I would put, especially because we need to see more, right? And and I think that there is something on it. Baseball is a little more difficult. We see that yes. with Trout and Otani where you can be, you yes. can take that. So you're right. I, I think, yes, we'll put Castellanos in there. Absolutely. He, he deserves to be in that group. I think you'll see it from a more tangible or maybe yes. even a more immediate response Absolutely. on the yes. gridiron or the hardwood. But I mean, my goodness, man, Castel- Castellanos aside, it's really Maxi and Hertz who, if they do it, like Devontae Smith could have this amazing season. They had 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns, but that doesn't necessarily correlate into the game. 
It doesn't correlate into the end result. It's going to be really hard for Jalen Hurts to put up monster numbers and those be empty as far as what the team does. Devontae could put up numbers. I mean, Deshaun was doing that back with Riley Cooper. Like, you could put up big numbers, but if it doesn't transfer into the end of the game, it looks empty as a whole. That's where I think Jalen Hurts and Tyrese Maxey, again, back to what we were saying here, there isn't anybody on that team that can take a bigger leap from where they are to where they can be. And Maxie does that, man. I'm with you. Western or Eastern Conference Finals, sign me up. I need it because I'm, I, you know, I usually am the hopeful Philly sports fan, not the guy who's, you know, attempting to assault somebody at the, yeah. at, the at the stadium or outside or really getting into it. I kind of like to laugh. I go to the commanders games. I think looking at people, people expect you to be a little more angry as a fan because I kind of try to be the more optimistic fan and just enjoy the experience. Yep. Uh, But I'm kind of really starting to feel like if we go through another year and we don't get past the, the second round, it's been a, it's been a just spun our tires for a decade. As far as like, we've, we've wasted, We've because, wasted commodities and we've wasted effort and, and it didn't turn into a championship. Well, so my, my theory on that and my belief is, is because when we had the Evan Turner, uh, yeah. uh through holiday team, they got to the second round. They gave the Celtics a scare, the Celtics that I think pushed the heat seven, that Eastern conference championship, uh, round, we were we could have been in the Eastern Conference Finals that year, and so we tore it down after that to try right. to get Ben to try to get Tobias and, and everything right. And you don't, you get to the same place. It's 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 as if the Eagles went through a tanking. So imagine we're at like 2005. The Eagles didn't tank. The Eagles ended up being a bad team for a couple of years. Right. Well, it's hard also, in the NFL, right? Yeah. So 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 if they if we would have tanked after 2005. That would be similar. I mean, yeah. the, you have seasons where out of 82 games, you're only winning in the, the low teens. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, you know, that that's the thing where it, it's so difficult to control your own destiny, right? We would see somebody out there create it. And as much as the NFL has always been billed as a copycat league, that's why analytics took off in baseball like 15, 16 years ago because teams started winning with it. All of a sudden, it, you know, NBA, NFL, if you found a way to truly tank, control your destiny as a result of that, I think you would start to see it widespread. Now, the problem and, you know, just take it case by case. Right. The problem with the Sixers is that if you look back at the tank, if you look at the just attempt to, to game the lottery to get what they got out of that, it's not like they're the Vladi Divox led kings. Right. Like they've got stuff in front of them. They've got Joel. They were able to turn stuff into other stuff. Right. They were, they had Simmons at one point. They had draft picks. So Brian Colangelo screwed a lot of stuff up, but they had a lot of stuff, is my point. A lot of opportunities, but yeah. that's kind of what makes it all the more frustrating. <laughs> right. No, you're right. That, that's the thing is if you, if you squander opportunity, And that's, you know, just taking it back to like betting. And we do a lot of this stuff on Odd Shopper just real quick, like 20 seconds. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yes and no run first inning. And basically, if you're betting a yes run first inning, you're betting clearly on a team to score in the first inning. But you're betting on scoring chances. You're betting on, you know, like, are they going to have chances? Are they going to have opportunities? So much in life, right, across the board. I don't care what you're talking about. So much in life is opportunity. Because you can't get anything unless you have the opportunity. And then so much of once you have the opportunity could be circumstance, could be luck, could just be the bounce of a football or, yeah. you know, who you meet in the elevator, what have you. But if you're not in that elevator, if you're not prepared for that game, if you haven't prepared for circumstances ahead of time, if you haven't Bill Belichick it, then, you, you know, you're going to be SOL. And you're right. Squandering opportunities is, is definitely going to leave people with the worst feeling. Speaking of squandered opportunities, what the hell is going on in Brooklyn, uh, according to Shander? <laughs> Man, I, I, I look, I, I think at the end of the day, the only thing that really changes is that they didn't have Harden, which we knew, and Ben Simmons comes back. I, I just I don't think much else changes with that. I, I don't know how drastic of a move we're going to see. I don't know if it was just people 
you know, vocal frustration. But the, the whole thing that really got me was during that breakup, if you will, was reported. There was that little caveat about, oh, no, no, we'll still play together. Right. <laughs> and you're like, well, well, what the hell was the problem in the first place that they brought Ben Simmons in? Like, and what else we'll could go somewhere else? We'll go somewhere else together. What the, yeah. where does that happen? Have I don't know about that ever happening. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's so strange that there was this level of breakup, yet somebody threw that caveat in there. You know, like when I don't know what it would be, some summer fling, you know, camp where anybody went to that or whatever. It was just like, no, we have to break up. We're going back to school. But if maybe we could see each other in another area, like, I don't know, it just it didn't make any sense. But with all of that said, I think there's going to be a lot of posturing. And I think that team comes back. And as much as we like to make fun of Ben Simmons, or at least what happened here with Ben Simmons, the Brooklyn Nets with a healthy Kevin Durant and even just a present Kyrie Irving are a problem with everybody else healthy. So that's where I think the problem lies for the rest of the conference, which is, yeah, yeah, you're never going to take Durant or Irving lightly. But I think there is kind of this like, come on, these guys don't have the, you know, what together. Come on, really? And then all of a sudden Durant and Irving are two handedly beating you in a seven game series. And you're looking back like, what the hell just happened? I, 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 the, uh, the, the way that the Sixers handled Simmons last year, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a Sixers fan, it, it's indicative. I think they handled it correctly and ended up needing to get him out of town. But it's indicative of where sports team management is going to go. These guys are these, – these team owners are getting pissed. And I don't know about this situation where you have a guy with three years left on a contract and just saying, I want to go uh, – You've dictated our entire strategy for the last, however, we've leveraged assets for you. Are you really saying that you're going to sit out? Is Kevin, and and I think, and, and I love watching Kevin Durant play. I think he's in year 16 coming up. So we could be going towards the end of, of watching Kevin Durant play. It's beautiful basketball. They, they might need to hold his feet to the fire, to your point. It might just, they might just say, what the hell? Are you really going to sit out all year? Because yeah. It sets a, it's it's a, it's it's a dangerous precedent. And it's going to put other guys' money on the line. You're not going to get these guarantees. I guarantee in the next CBA, this guaranteed money stuff's going away. It's interesting, man, because I think on the surface, there's always going to be the rebuttal or retort to that point, which is, well, Ben Simmons just wasn't a big enough star, right? <laughs> ben Simmons overshot his hand. He thought he could clear more books than he could and instead was sitting there like, oh, Sorry, apologizing to people. And, and I think that's clearly right. That's accurate. Ben Simmons didn't have the cachet to do that. But then my response to that is, how many years has Damian Lillard wanted out again? Like, how many years have we heard, this is it. This is it for Damian Lillard. If they don't get their stuff together, he's out of here. And he just signed. Now, granted, it was a two-year deal. But he's still there. And he's still adding years to it. So, yeah, ultimately, I think, Matt, you can make some sort of crazy power play. But I think it is looked at that. And I think Ben Simmons, if anything, probably did more damage to anybody trying to do something similar to that, even if they had double the cachet that Ben did. It was kind of like, you know, if you're a more important, bigger name player, you might send a text over to Ben or Ben's people, you know, be like, hey, man, what, what are you doing here? What are yeah. you trying to do? Let, let me do that. You don't do that. Let me do that. And not to get into the substance of it, but that's what the what the NFL team owners have have said, have, have probably texted in their group chat to the fellow owners of the Browns. Like, what the hell are you doing? This guy <laughs> probably doesn't play for yeah. half of the season. And you've guaranteed, it, we're not even sure if he if he actually will ev be eligible to play. That like, <laughs> We're getting really close here. I mean, who the hell knows? I, yep. the, the whole thing is, is amazing. Uh, at some point, some kind of discipline is going to come down. Either way, they've offered a guy who missed an entire season unprecedented money they could be in a bad spot oh man I, I just something about cleveland right and how they handle things and, and have handled things and it's the the application of analytics from a, a baseball mind to just losing on purpose and 
so many different things there. And look, if Deshaun plays, that's a different story. Yeah, but you're you're right. Where it's kind of just like, hey, and and this again, I think goes back to what we were talking about, where it's really hard to lose on purpose in the <laughs> NFL. This might be one of those like circumstances. And again, sometimes circumstances is just it's a train, man. You either got to catch that thing or it's gone. You missed it. But this might have been something that just fell in Cleveland's lap where they could essentially say, hey, we take the year off because Deshaun takes the year off. We get a pretty decent pick now. We get him back next year. We have some solid guys on defense that are locked in for a year. Now, all of a sudden, it's like we sacrificed the season and we got something basically double from that. That's really the only way that you can get around trying to, I guess, tank, if you will. But yeah, I mean, that that's what they did. That's what the Browns did. They sacrificed this year for the future with the hopes that Deshaun is going to play at some point. That means that they, they they could they could expend some assets then. They could get rid of a Kareem Hunt or somebody like that. Sure. If, they, if, if what the, the, the deal is, we're going to go, you know, 5 and 12 this year. T- tough stuff for us. You know, we, we, made, we made an investment because we think that Deshaun is that guy. And to be frank about the football, on the football field, he is a top five quarterback. Sure, yeah. it, it was it was the right call, except for something huge. <laughs> right, right. So, that was it. I mean, that was it. That's enough in in the sense to knock him off the field. Yes, but that's why the bet or the wager, or the risk, if you will, makes sense long term. Is that you're not looking at it year to year. You're looking at it over a body of work. Absolutely. So. Speaking of a body of work, Albert Pujols is amazing. Yeah. One of the greatest baseball players of all time. One of the, I would say, five best that I've, my people in my generation have had the opportunity to just turn on our TVs and watch. Uh, but he was in the home run derby. He was a late addition. Would take that for what it's worth. Uh, and Kyle Schwarber, he lost to him. Yeah. Just let's just put it out there. So, how did that happen? And was he was it robbery? Was it some WWE stuff going on? Was did he take a fall? What are, what are your thoughts on this whole thing? Yeah, if that's not Albert Pujols, then I don't think you raise as many questions, right? If if that's Johnny Pujols, does that really raise all these alarms? No, but it, it's the circumstances. It's the fact that Pujols is not having an All Star type season per se, but he's the commissioner exemption. He's thrown in there as the local name clearly in what was now the angels la the dodgers that whole connection in la so there's so many storylines that narratives that back albert pools so when you have the difference of one home run that wasn't counted it's really hard to think that it wasn't just omitted or looked over or just like, oh yeah, nobody's going to notice or, oh, we can deal with that. Who cares? Like, who cares if social media explodes, Matt, 10 minutes later because the broadcast won't show it or the broadcast won't harp on it and we're just going to keep moving forward at Major League Baseball and we'll apologize the day after, if even if they did, which they didn't, and then kind of go from there. So, look, my response would be never leave anything to the refs. Right. Yep. It never leave anything to a holding call, never leave anything <laughs> to a pass interference, never leave anything to a charge, never leave anything at all to the referees. And in this case, it's unfortunate, but the referees slash the replay, what have you. If Schwarber just blasted 30 out and put Pujols out of his misery, it didn't matter if they didn't count one or two home runs for Schwarber. The pitching was awful. His pitching was awful, too. Well, that's his. I, I don't know why he gets to choose who throws to him. It was bad. It was all over the zone. Guys, uh, 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 Rodriguez's pitcher was just, it was darts. It was exactly where it needed to be every time. I don't know, man. Maybe Schwarber's guy was sick or something, and they had to get a reliever in there because it did him no favors. It, it, it was a little embarrassing. But, it, I mean, try to, not, try to take it for what it's worth. It's a home run derby. Sure. It, and Pujols is one of the greatest, so it's 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 okay, whatever. But, but baseball shouldn't, you know, any baseball executives listening should be wary of this because you are already losing eyeballs. It's it's getting tougher and tougher to market right. this sport. And if it turns into WWE, it could be over for the nation's pastime. So just be aware. 
You're right. It, it's not a good look. There, you have to be popular to survive stuff like that. The NFL, NBA now, you have to be super popular. You can't be losing popularity and have some sort of scandal like that at the same time. It's not going to work. The MLB couldn't withstand to that point that like a Saint, that, that blown call on the Saints. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Not at all. They couldn't. You're right. They Only the NFL control. could get away with that. That's it. Yeah, I don't even know if the NBA right now, on, on that level of a game, you're right. The NFL, NFL will just laugh and be like, oh, we're sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll clear $5 billion at the gate next week. What do, you, what do you want? Seriously. So do the Phils make the playoffs? Oh, this is tough. All right, here's the caveat. If they trade for a legit starting pitcher, meaning if they trade for a name that's better on the staff than everybody except for Wheeler and Nola, then yes, they do. Okay. I think so they do. If does, they Mayo, does Mayo clear that hurdle? Uh, from uh, from the Reds, Tyler Mayo. I think that's how you oh, say Molly? it. Oh, Molly? Yeah, Molly. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't hate that. You know, I, I wouldn't hate him by any means i i don't know to be honest what i ask for versus what they can get back i i don't know how realistic it would be versus you know what they're going to give up if they can give up but yeah i mean i think somebody like that and and look he's pitching anybody who pitches for the reds is dealing with the smallest ballpark right great american small park so you're dealing with just a bandbox of a spot if he's able to control that then he's definitely able to control citizens bank so I wouldn't hate it by any means. I, I just think that overall that that is what they need to address more so than anything. And if they don't, then there's just no way they make the playoffs. I know Harper comes back, but look, other guys are coming back for other teams as well. One of my buddies today, and I'll, I'll because he's my buddy, I'll let him remain nameless because I totally <laughs> disagree with this. I don't know if this was this person was joking, but on this social media yep. website where things should be not always taken so seriously, somebody said to trade uh, Bryce Harper for Juan Soto. Um, not even... It, like straight I, it, up? Straight up. Bryce Harper he, for Juan Soto. Here's the thing about that. I, I don't think that's even possible. I know that's not possible because the Nationals let Harper go in order to keep Soto. So why would they then reverse that decision? Like, what are they gaining? So, you know, what, right? And I think Soto in five years will be a better player. I think everybody Absolutely. knows that. No, no, like, no doubt. I think you could argue right now Soto yes. in a full season, in a, yes. in a motivated season, you could argue Soto is at the very least as good, if not better in enough areas that you could say he's better than Harper. But let's be honest here. I, I just I don't know how the Washington Nationals do something like that. I mean, just take the ver- just take all the variables out. You're making a decision to move on from one of two commodities because you want to keep the other commodity. Why would you then trade that commodity for the commodity that you gave up in the first place to keep the commodity you're now trading? It's it's absurd. And so okay. I like I, I said just want to make sure I'm not the only one who sees it that way. But I will say it won't matter if Juan Soto goes to the Yankees. The season's over. We could just, it's like, that's Golden State Warriors, KD kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, Mets or Yankees at this point. Forget oh, it. Lights out. God. Oh, that'd be awful. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, it, I don't mind the Yankees. If it's the Mets, we're going to have to see him. Like, I think we, we play the Mets like another 12 times. Yeah, it's not going to be good. Oof, really and not. He's good. motivated too. So, oof. We'll see. We'll see. Could very well go to the Yankees, like you say. We'll see. At this pace, the 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 Phils are, I think, on pace for about eighty seven wins, which is five that more than enough. last year. Yeah, that should be enough for that wild card spot, the third at least. <sighs> yeah. So so we talked about this a little bit earlier with Jalen Hurts. Let's say he does ball out this year. Let's say he's you know uh, does take that next step that all of us are looking for him to take, and I think. That's somewhere in the McNabb area, the Mm -hmm. era, the spectrum of the the great Donovan McNabb is even one of his best seasons or worst seasons. If he does have a McNabb-ish year, a good year, team gets to the divisional round, uh, conference final, uh, conference championship, do you think that the Eagles should pay pay him early or make him prove it again? No, I I don't know what else he would have to do at that point. So – the Eagles, who have had commitment issues, clearly with the quarterback position since McNabb is gone, this is a steady relationship 
that doesn't have whatever, if it red flags, what have you, just things that jumped out that just irked you that you thought to yourself, oh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's it's worth the physical or whatever the people yep. stomach yep. for relationships with Carson Wentz. You don't even have that with Jalen yep. Hurts. And this is what I wrote about, not this week, but last week about Hurts and Philly Voice, Matt, was what what's going on here? Because the mantra in our city, and it doesn't matter if you're here or not, you, you, Philadelphia, you get it because you're from here. It doesn't matter yep. where anyone physically is on the planet. That mentality doesn't leave. Which has yep. always been like, show up and we'll and we'll give you the love. Give yes. a damn. Give just give a damn and we'll give a damn back. Own up yep. to anything negative and and we'll love you for to a fault. I mean, we ask yes. way too much from our relationship with our professional athletes. And, and what I wrote about was, well, what am I missing here? Jalen Hurts has done all of that. Yeah. Jalen Hurts does show up. Jalen Hurts puts his head down and goes to work every day. Jalen Hurts talks and is vocal about what he needs to work on and how he's working on that. Jalen Hurts is talking after games about mistakes and how he can own up to that. And he hasn't been treated. Aaron Rowan got treated better because he ran into a center field wall than Jalen Hurts. And here's the thing. It's not even like Jalen Hurts has gone out this year and the true prove it year and failed yet. It's almost like he hasn't even been given a benefit of the doubt of, okay, let's see what you can do for a lot of people in our fan base. And I'm like, that's contrary to what has been preached in this city for 25 plus years since I've been here, at least, which is blue collars, blunch pail, all the other stuff. Show up. Jalen Hurts is bringing his lunch pail every single day to work and he's not getting that same appreciation, at least benefit. And I think that's wrong, personally. I I will I will and I hope to and I will continue to compare him to Donovan McNabb. And in terms of leadership intangibles, I'm a McNabb guy. Yeah. He's my favorite football player of all time. Nice. Jalen Hurts Jersey in Island. that category. I'm gonna have to take Jalen Hurts as a team leader, as take accountability. I played like yeah, ish. This week, you know, I, 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 I got to accept that. I got to wear that. Uh, the Giants game, it was an awful game, but I've seen McNabb have games. I saw McNabb break this getting sacked record in Giants stadium. Same as, same as Jalen, this, this city just, they don't give these guys a break. Carson got a lot of breaks. There was a yeah. lot of bad football played. Yep. Yep. And, and look, rightfully so when, when there's bad football or if there's bad football, then, you should lay on people. And and I think there is an extent to that, clearly, you know, between fandom and just belligerence. But <laughs> you should be able to, in the sense of holding from fan to player to team to coach uh, accountable. It just feels like we've kind of, and I say we collectively, of course, yeah. there are a lot oh, of yeah, people I get in this it. fan base who are not doing this. But it feels like people are skipping steps. And it's almost like, nah, he's not going to do anything this year. So let me go ahead and already prepare for the misery or the or the frustration that will be a bad year. The commanders would die to be in our shoes. Oh, my giants and commanders. Absolutely. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. And, and and I'll give you this thought here on the NFC East real quick with Dallas. If you look at the history of teams that end the regular season on the road, two games in a row. So their last two games are on the road. They don't stand a good shot of making the playoffs. They sure as hell don't stand a shot of winning the Super Bowl. You can pretty much take Dallas out. But Dallas is two road games at the end of the year. And I think there's going to be a pretty big rude awakening. Like, I wouldn't be shocked at all. I know it's going to sound crazy on the surface here, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if you see something like Philadelphia, New York, Dallas, Washington, as far as the rankings this year. Basically, the point that Dallas doesn't win and may not even make the playoffs. I would flip the Giants and and the Commanders. I think the Commanders are an eight and nine football okay. team. I'm gonna say I'm gonna finally put it out. I've been telling people that I talk to. I've been yeah. watching stuff. I think they're going to be sneaky good. I think their their defense is is still opportunistic. They, Chase Young is going to still take another step. I think that they're an eight and nine team, and I, and I think you're right. I think I think the the Cowboys. If Zeke Elliott continues to regress at the same pace, we just stay on the same course. They lost Amari Cooper. That's a big loss. Right. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, I, we don't know when he be, will be back. It's just going to be uh, Dalton Schultz um, and and CeeDee Lamb and so, Zeke Elliott. That's, and, and they didn't really get much better. 
You know, they that lost some guys that they kind of plug some holes. The thing about Washington, real quick, the thing about, and this is why I'm staying away from them as a whole. <laughs> Ron Rivera Smart is, move. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Ron Rivera is 6-11 and 11 straight up. Like, forget against the spread, forget any betting stuff, just 6-11 and 11 straight up at home. That concerns Ooh. me. Yeah. Ooh. You can't win games at home. Ooh. That is a tough way that's to live. Like man. 35%. Like, yeah, that's awful at home. That's just straight up at home. Here's another thing, too. It's even worse because Brandon Sheriff, we all know, is a monster. He's he's a beast of a human being, and he punishes people on the offensive line. Yes. He's down in Jacksonville now. A huge reason, by the way, why I love Jacksonville this year to do a lot of special things. But Same. that point aside. They are three. Washington is three and 21 straight up without Sheriff. Ooh. So you're taking away their best player, at least according to the spread, and they don't win games at home. That's just a tough one, man. A tough one. I'm with you, though. That defense, like they have a legit defense, and I think their defense is now going to have to win games on the road, which you know how just difficult that is in general in the NFL. I uh, so so the guy at the Wawa, the manager at the Wawa, that's like about 500 yards from uh, literally from the commander's facility. He looks like Carson, <laughs> but that's the most important guy. And I talked with him about this and I, I I'm being honest. I think that if if Carson gets over the fact that he is not Aaron Rodgers, yeah. he's he's not even Dak to be And a few years ago. I would have said I would take Carson uh, and a lot of people would agree with me and did agree with me, but. If he accepts that, that he's more Kirk Cousins than he is Aaron Rodgers, Carson Wentz could be dangerous because he's a he could be game manager plus. He's yeah. got a huge arm. Yeah. Yep. If he if he just accepts that, you know, he's not the guy, I don't know how you get over the, the leadership intangibles completely flipped from Jay, from our current quarterback because – He's not a leader. It, uh, somebody else is going to have to step up on the commanders for them to get to those eight wins. But I think it's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Look, the division, I think, will open itself up. They're, they're playing an easier schedule. So I, I get it. Like, there's definitely a pathway to it. So quick lightning round. Uh, more yards this season. Kenny Gainwell or Miles Sanders? I, I think it's Miles Sanders simply because he's going to be targeted more but I, I think it's going to be really close. And I'm just, I don't think Miles Sanders, I'm banking on Miles Sanders not getting hurt, but Kenny Gainwell is a part of this offense. So I, I will reluctantly say Sanders. I think that's a great question. And I'm happy to be wrong if it's Gainwell. I just, I don't know, man. Like I could see Gainwell having nine targets for 48 yards one week and having zero targets the next week. So he's, I, I, I don't know how wide the variance is going to be with him. I know this is lightning round. Sorry, but I, that's my answer. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. No, and uh, I think, I hope that you're right. I fear that you're wrong, and I fear that every time I look at it, something about zero touchdowns in a 17 NFL yeah. game season, that's killing me. You're killing yep. me, Smalls. I, yep. I mean, I like Miles Sanders. I really do. I like pretty much everything that I see from him. He's got like a 4.8 um, yards per get, uh, carry. He's not getting in the end zone. He's falling out of favor with Doug and Nick for some reason, and you're not getting in the end zone. I think they'll start off giving Miles Sanders the, the bulk of the touches. If we get to week three and he's not lighting it up, if he hasn't had a couple of over 100-yard games, I think they're going to – they're going to turn the ship around. Miles Sanders might not even finish the season wearing Eagle screen. That's what I think. Wow. That would be something, you know, if they're able to turn that into a pick or a player and a necessity and, and fill that void and you're getting enough from Gainwell then God, my blessing by all means. I, I hope that it doesn't happen. I hope miles because miles Sanders seems like a good guy. He kind right. of reminds me of shady McCoy. Um, but it hasn't all come together yet. So, yep. And I think that they really are high on Kenny game. I, I thought that he should have played in the slot last year. So we'll yeah, see. Well, that's the thing too, where I just don't know yet. So it's, it's a hard one to answer just because I don't know how they're going to use game. Well, and they, they have so many different options. You're right. We might have a different, uh, I might have to ask you in like week four. Right. Right. Exactly. Back in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more sacks this season, Jordan Davis or Fletcher Cox. I, I don't think, 
Cox is going to have the statistics because other guys, including Jordan Davis, are going to get the benefit of the numbers. I think it's going to be really difficult. Teams are going to have to figure this out the first three, four weeks. And if you look at the defenses that, or the offenses, part of me, that the Eagles are facing, it's going to be, I think, favorable more so. But this is where Jonathan Gannon has to make his money and figure out scheme and figure out ways to attack because the short answer is neither because of how little pressure they put on quarterbacks last year, right? So you need to be in a situation where first and foremost, now with the son Reddick here, like you've got guys, Brandon's back. Like you've got guys that should be putting pre- hands on jerseys, quarterback jerseys here. So I'm going to say Jordan Davis, but it's a result of Fletcher Cox having a really good year. And the better year that he has, the more he kind of stays off the sheet because he's doing so much and therefore has to be like tackles, probably Fletch. But sacks, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, I'd say like five and a half or whatever it may be, it'd probably be a half a sack difference. Yeah, I think it's like a, I was in the same ballpark, about five, five to three, something like that. Yeah, I could see that, right. I think this is the last season uh, yeah. with Fletcher, I agree. number 91. I agree. And look, I mean, it, that's why you bring Jordan Davis in. That's why you have him here, Fletcher, one more year to maximize the carryover. The crossover, I guess, the better way to put it between the two. So you're right. Same thing they're doing at the center position with Kelsey. So more sacks this season, Derek Barnett or Josh Sweat? Man, if it's not Josh Sweat, then I think we've overestimated this young man. I, I you have think? no doubt, <laughs> no doubt it's going to be Josh Sweat there. More penalties, Derek Barnett. More sacks, Josh Sweat. I think, I think. I'm taking Derek Barnett. I'm taking okay. Derek Barnett. And if I was betting, I'm betting Derek Barnett over six sacks. I think over six sacks. Look, I, I mean, again, you're going to be out there with the assumption that you've got other guys that we talked about yep. on the line as well. So yep. bar, you know, Derek Barnett should have plenty of sack opportunities. We talked about scoring opportunities, right? So I'm with you there. So I think where we verge is like you, you are confident and I'm not saying this like leading. I'm just saying as far as kind of looking at where we are, yeah, you're confident that he can take advantage of the score of the sack opportunities. I don't necessarily know. So that's why I shaded towards sweat, but I think both of us agree that Derek Barnett's going to have a, enough opportunity to get that six, six and a half sacks. They're, they're both situational pass rushers. Yeah. I think that we're at the point, the team is at the point, and they're accepting it. I think you may even see on second, third down sometimes, you may see Fletcher go to D-end because yeah. they want to have them come off the edge, be completely uh, – they're not an every down – They're neither one of them are every down players. And so I think that they'll get opportunities with, you know, uh, you know, uh, not not winded at all to just right. hey this is your opportunity and you better make the best of it. Derek Barnett, you haven't been on the play on the field in eight plays. This is your play. Go make a play. <laughs> it's he's gonna have chances. You're right, and it's just a matter of don't false start and or, or don't you know go off sides and and complete the sack and you'll be right. And I'm happy to admit I'm wrong if this kid has a year. Trust me. Yeah, or, I, or I'm done with them. This is this is my last. This is my last <laughs> bit of patience with you, Derek. If you're you listening, go. if anybody you know is listening, sends this to you. You've made big plays right. in the NFC Championship. People don't remember that one. Uh, made a big play in the NFC Championship against the Vikings. Yeah, we beat their butts, but it was a key drive. You got the strip sack, big play. You recovered the fumble. In the in the Super Bowl, big plays, but there's been a lot of stuff that's been an eyesore. So yep. that's why we're having this conversation. We go out and prove us wrong. Uh, more catches this season. Uh, Devontae Smith or AJ Brown? Catches. Catches. I still think it's going to be AJ Brown. I think Devontae Smith is going to have himself a season, but it's going to be the first four five weeks. I think are still going to be as a result of how defenses shade or just defend truly A.J. Brown, who they put on him. And then it's on Sirianni and then Jalen Hurts to first put Smith in a better situation to take advantage of that, and then Hurts to find him. I also think that Devontae's productivity 
is probably going to come in more chunk plays than AJ Brown. So Agreed. that's where rece- like receptions. I, I actually think Devontae has a good shot to get more receiving yards, but I think AJ smashes him on the receptions. Agreed. Agreed. Uh I th- I think he's he's due for a big Devontae's I could see Devontae in the neighborhood of 1300 yards. I think you said you might have yeah. said that, no, that number earlier. I, I think that's that. right. Yeah, I could definitely see that. With AJ with about 1100, but you got AJ right. sitting at like 85, oh, 90 more catches. Seconds. Yeah, or, or 15 more catches. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, look, we saw that with he doesn't have the flat out point A to point B speed, but the productivity that we got on average from someone like Deshaun Jackson, that prototype is there for someone like Devontae Smith now with a guy who can also get downfield and AJ Brown. I think Devontae Smith can be not relegated to. You also have Quez Watkins, too. Let's not forget. You have guys who can spread, definitely spread the field out. So I think Smith is going to be somebody who's probably going to be top five. You'll start to, like, halfway through the season, I would not be shocked if Devontae Smith is, like, top five yards per catch, you know, with enough grabs to qualify. This is – they have the opportunity. On paper, they already are, but they're the best re- Eagles receiving core – of the last 20 years. Long time. Yeah, I would say that. I would of say the, that. Of at least the last 20 years. Macklin and Jackson actually did it, so they still hold the belt. But, you know, week nine, around the, the bye, we might be talking about this is the best receiver. Oh, you're right. right. You're right. Yeah. How many games do the Birds win this season? I bet them early on FanDuel a while back. It was even money that – for, for them to win 10 games. And I I've got them winning at least 10 games this year. So again, if you're going to tell me that through all of the circumstances, this entire conversation that we had, that was football related, Matt, that I have a 50, 50 shot that the Eagles win 10 games with an extra game on the schedule. I'll take yeah. that every single time I'll go over that. So I technically went over nine and a half, 10 plus was the bet that, they win 10 games. That's all I need them to win is 10 games, but I have them winning at least 10. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. They win, they win 10 games. They could have won 10 games last year. They, they let a couple games early yeah. go. They should have beat the giants in New York. Even last season, they could have, they could have won 10. So totally got that. Um, I, I think I would go over 11 at this point, but I, I wouldn't hate that either. I, I, I mean, I placed the bet at 10, but I wouldn't hate over 11 either. Yeah. So where can people follow along and support you, Ethan? All right, brother. Easy spot at, at Stacks Teddy is, is the new betting account. So if you're into that stuff, by all means, follow me there. Odd Shopper, I have all my content up there. So if you want to subscribe as well. And then if you're in this area, the Philly area, Fox 29, I'm on there a bunch, three, four times a week in the morning. And then also Friday nights for props and locks and then Philly voice. But, you know, that's it. That's I don't want to leave you with a bunch. That's, that's no, it. no. I do all the plugs you want. I'm, I, Thank you. Yeah, of course, I'm Matt Rogers, Politido, P-O-L-I-T-I-D-O-P-E. Thank you all so much for listening, E10. You'll Thank be you. back to tell me about Josh Sweat. Yep. And uh, Miles <laughs> Sanders' trade, where he goes. <laughs> Hopefully. You got it. <laughs> See you, man.